If there are a few tenets my mom has taught me about money over the years, it's two things. Save up whatever you can and do everything in your power to build and maintain good credit scores. The latter is especially important in this day and age. There are so many options that can be opened up to you with good credit scores, such as more desirable credit options and even establishing new lines of credit. It's something that can be hard to do and may take years to develop. But what if I were to tell you that simply paying your utility bills can give your FICO score the jolt it needs? The key here is an Experian boost. Developed by Experian, what this bad boy does is give you credit for the utility bills you already pay. Phone bills, electric, gas, water, cable and internet, you name it. Not only boosting credit scores, but having the ability to do it instantly instead of taking months to do. Most people who join up see a boost greater than 10 points in their credit and the consumer has complete control. They can come and go at any time. Best of all, it's absolutely free and no credit card is required. If you're interested in increasing your FICO score with Experian Boost, head over to Experian.com slash Utree or click the link below in the description. Credit scores are a tricky subject, but Experian Boost can help you boost them like they're boosting America. Speaking of which, I'd like to sincerely thank Experian for sponsoring this video. And now for our feature presentation. I know there are some of you that have been waiting a long time for this. Don't worry, I've been hearing you. I was just waiting for the right time to strike. After pondering it though, I've come to an epiphany. The lions don't need a moment for me to talk about them. For they are an eternal moment. They continually just exist. They're that kid. You know the one I'm talking about, the one that clings onto a social group but isn't really part of it. He doesn't really make a whole lot of noise to be noticed, but you're too nice to tell him to fuck off so he just sits alone in a corner while you play video games. It's pure awkwardness, but amplify this for decades upon decades of ineptitude. It's not that you feel disgust or pity, you just don't feel anything. And it's insane regarding their past. I don't have to go into gruesome detail about their exploits. It would be far too depressing and or laughable to mention without any sort of trigger warning. I could mention all the failed draft picks, the inept coaches, the total incompetence of Matt Millen. Seriously, why the fuck did they hire him to be their GM to begin with? But that wouldn't be kosher to the unprotected ears of those watching. Then again, that's why you're here, aren't you? Why not mock their current situation? Let's go back to the 2017 season. The Lions were... okay. That's the only thing I'm going to say about them. They weren't terrible, they weren't anywhere near a Super Bowl contender, they were just average. For a team that's been in a perpetual rebuild for about the last 25 years, this is a damning statement. I should just end the video here, but that's not fun to me. Neither is dealing with the mediocrity of Jim Caldwell. Once again, just okay as a head coach. That wasn't good enough for Detroit. Even with a 9-7 record, they blew several key games at the home stretch to miss the playoffs. I know a very surprising revelation regarding this team. To Detroit, they were on the cusp of something promising, but they didn't have the right guy leading the charge. Jim Caldwell, you can decay like most of this city's architecture in the background. Now they have a new identity, being a cheap imitation of far more relevant franchises. With their newest cow to be processed through the slaughterhouse, they went with a young defensive coordinator. And not just any coordinator, one from the New England Patriots. If you have any history of how their coordinators do as head coaches, it's fucking ghastly. Teams think that marinating underneath the controlling grasp of the hoodie will allow them to photosynthesize his skills, but they would be mistaken. The only one who hasn't been a complete disaster has been Bill O'Brien, and even then he's been on the hot seat so long his ass has permanent third degree burns. If anything is so Detroit, their new head coach would immediately be put into the spotlight for rape allegations, because what's this city without any sort of executive corruption? I'll stop with the low-hanging fruit. What I won't stop hammering on is their newest identity of being a shameless copy of the Patriots, but without anything that makes that team good. It's the same mistakes that every other team makes when trying to take on their four. Yes, hire one of their scouts to be your GM. Sure, let's conscript a bunch of their old players. Bring in the Garrett Blunt and Gronk. Wait, scratch Gronk, he'd rather retire than go to hell. The reality is they forget the three main ingredients that make New England successful. Belichick, Brady, and Kraft. Matt Patricia so far is far from a Belichick. If I remember correctly, a lot of Patriots fans wanted him fired in the early part of the 2017 season for their poorest defense, but I'd say he rebounded nicely. Just enough to make his men harder and tougher by making them practice in the cold. And the Lions play in a dome. And bitching about the posture of a reporter when he's asking a question about a receiver who just got traded. Bitch, you look like a high school phys ed teacher that has a bottle of adult water sitting near his desk. You should be the last person to comment on someone's appearance. In fact, why are you always nitpicking journalists when you're allegedly always late for meetings? Whatever happened to Lombardi time? Am I supposed to be impressed that he's had an awful relationship with Matt Stafford so far? No, Stafford isn't Brady. He is never going to be Brady. The dude is a gunslinger you're trying to make into a short-range passer and he ain't that. Not that I'm trying to 
defend the guy, but he is one of the best fantasy football quarterbacks in the NFL today. Yeah, I said fantasy. He's the kind of player where he'll look rather mediocre for the first three quarters of play. Then he'll throw a touchdown or two in garbage time to pad his stats and make him look better than what he is. Seriously, this guy can't beat quality opponents. People give Kirk Cousins shit for his record against teams over 500. Stafford has been significantly worse than him. And the Lions gave him $27 million a year in an act of utter delusion. I mean, he's serviceable, but would you call this guy an elite quarterback? Okay, maybe in Detroit's depressing world, he's the best QB they've ever had, but other teams might want more. Although in his defense, I will say this. Have the Lions ever given him a decent offensive line? Or a good running game? I don't think they've had a great running back since Barry Sanders. They didn't have a 100-yard rusher in a game until Carryon Johnson this past year. It had been almost half a decade since it last happened. Oh yeah, I forgot about the 2018 season. The Lions had hope for about one play. The pick six against Sam Darnold in week one. Look at Quandre Diggs go. It's gonna be a great year as the Jets completely destroy you at home as Stafford's signals were deciphered by the opposition. I mean, there were some good times. Beating New England in your version of the Super Bowl. Watching as Mason Crosby shanked field goal after field goal to top a Green Bay self-destruction. Beating Miami, the most challenging of teams to defeat. At 3-3, three and three, the Lions fans were coming out of their plywood-laden caves to talk about the glories of 10-6. and six. Seriously, only 10-6? and six? You guys are pathetic. Just like the Lions who utterly collapsed and lost at 9. For Detroit, this is just the cold, unforgiving reality of Windsor breathing down their necks. Patricia and his lust to make the Detroit Patriots handcuff the offense and turned into an uninspired retread. You know what would be great? Forcing your gunslinger to throw a bajillion screens on third down for a team with poor alignment and blocking schemes. Sounds like a plan for disaster. When you lose to the goddamn Bills in an ugly game, there's a problem. No amount of benching not Tom Brady will turn you into Pygmalion, Matt. After such a disaster of a year, what is their plan, of course? Double down on skinning the Patriots alive. Trey Flowers, their top defensive end, signed to a ridiculous contract replacing Ezekiel Ansah. This big tight end out of Iowa looks just like Gronk, so they took him with a top 10 pick. Just like their old top 10 pick, Eric Ebron, who couldn't catch a cold until he fled this shithole last year. Funny how that works. Unlike their need for a white wide receiver to further imitate New England. I got it, Danny Amendola. He's old, injury prone, and a poor man's Wes Welker. And he played for the Patriots, so he's perfect. In fact, the tight end that got fucked over against New England's available too. Jesse James, more like a weapon to aid our new offensive coordinator. Daryl Bevel, the genius that passed the ball on the one yard line. Lions fans think this is good? Oh God. Does anyone understand why this team isn't taken seriously? It's like a teenager trying to chase all the popular trends but without any of the authenticity or passion. It makes sense since they've been run for decades by the incredibly incompetent Ford family. Let's just say if they ran their car business like this, they'd have to rely on government bailouts to get them out of it. No doubt they've owned the team since the mid-1960s. No doubt they have been mostly irrelevant since the time they started owning them. This isn't a coincidence. The Ford family has no idea how to run a football team and they haven't bothered to try learning. They let the wrong people take control and let them have the reins for way too goddamn long. Do you honestly expect an old woman and Martha Ford to turn into Margaret Thatcher and just start cleaning house? Fuck no, she's trying to enjoy whatever time she has left on this earth. Write all the puff pieces you want about how different she is from her late husband, I'll still have a hard time believing it. I'm not here to rub reality in your face because that's honestly doing it to you already. You have been nothing for decades. You are currently nothing. You will continue to be nothing. Whenever you somehow stumble into a playoff appearance, we merely think it will be a fluke as you get knocked out of the wildcard game in embarrassing fashion. Hell, NBC used your embarrassments to introduce shitty forced memes that didn't even use Impact or Comic Sans. This was somehow less cringeworthy than your team that day. The Lions are the goddamn Edsel, but produced every year. A disaster that people just look at in perplexity and disgust. For fuck's sake, the city can't even demolish their old building right. You'd think an area that has abandoned factories as plentiful as union workers would know how to do this because they sure as hell know how to take down a football team every year. In fact, let's look at their legacy. You'd think the correct answer was already in your mind. 0-16. Oh, well, you're wrong. They were one-upped in that category by a more aggressive suitor. The Browns not only did it with more pizzazz, but precision in 2017. You wanna know what it truly is? Having not one, but two generational talents retire in their prime since this team is such a jizz stain they don't wanna die in it. Not only that, but you also piss them off to the point where they want nothing to do with you for years on end due to your self-imposed incompetence. You keep talking about loyalty and passion, but where the fuck is it? I see nothing but rear-ended pintos for miles on end, and it won't end until the Ford family decides enough is enough and sells the team, which will most likely be to Dan Gilbert and create a new set of problems that they won't find a LeBron to bail them out of. 
They waste everything they touch. Hell, they don't even have to touch. Just looking at it will end their hopes and dreams. No, friends, the only reason why anyone knows who the fuck the Detroit Lions even are is Ninja. A fucking game streamer's childhood misfortune is the most relevant aspect of your organization today. Have I made my point yet? When a team only wins a playoff game once in over 60 years, I think there is some cynicism that is validated, no? And here's the most depressing fact of them all. The Lions are the best team Detroit has right now. You seriously think it's the Pistons? Yeah, their 14 straight playoff losses would like a word with you. The Red Wings have been trying to dig their way out of awful contracts for a few years now. And the Tigers? Any negative adjective I use won't be accurate enough. You really wanted this video? All I see is relentlessly beating a horse that's been dead for decades. In fact, I know the greatest punishment for a player come draft time. Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! Can we explain that or no? What? Just flat out overturning a pass interference call? What he said was... Yes, he did face guard him, but there you was know, no contact before the ball arrived. Okay? I understand, but your man saw it and threw the penalty. But we can't face guard. I understand that. But there was no contact. But he's, I've he's never in the history seen one turnover. Congratulations, man. First time in the history that's happened.